Okay, so we're going to talk about probability. And when you're looking at calculating probability from Punnett squares, the first thing I want you to know is that we're going to keep things in fractions. Okay, so we briefly went over this in class. Let's look. Um, yeah, this one's a better one. <laughs> Um, so, if we asked the probability of a cross between two heterozygotes, right, so that's a monohybrid cross of getting a child that is homozygous recessive, we would look and we would see that you have one out of one, two, three, four possible outcomes. Okay. If we were asking what about stop go away. showing having the dominant phenotype. Right? That's where you have to interpret, and there would be one, two, three out of a total of four chances. So a probability we're going to keep as fractions. You can also, like here, have a hundred percent probability, or you could have zero percent probability. And this is the only time I use percents because or else we're just writing one and zero, and sometimes that's confusing. So, a cross between a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive is going to give you 100% heterozygous, 100% displaying the dominant allele, 0% homozygous, 0% expressing the recessive allele. So, always look at your Punnett square and calculate how many offspring you have with the genotype or phenotype, this is phenotype, that's asked for. Now there's two rules that add on to the probability, and that's when we're looking at multiple events happening. The product rule is when you use the word and. So you're asking what's the chance that both these things are going to happen. So in this instance, tongue rolling is a dominant trait. Okay, so the first thing I always do is I write T equals tongue rolling. Because I use that capital T, I know it's the dominant one, and I say little t can't roll. So remember, assign your alleles and phenotypes. What is the probability that these parents, so one is heterozygous and the other cannot roll their tongue? So we know they have to be homozygous recessive. What's the probability that they're going to have two children that can roll their tongue? So two children that are T something, right? So we look at the parents and we can do a little Punnett square based on their gametes and we see the chance that they have a tongue roller is one half but they want to have two kids that can roll their tongue so you take one half times one half equals one fourth so whenever you're having and or both, you use the product rule and you calculate the product for each instance happening independently and you multiply them together. Sorry, you calculate the probability for each of them happening independently and then you multiply them together. Sometimes you do the addition rule and this is where you have the keyword or. Okay. So 
tongue rolling is dominant, so we have big T as a roller, little t is not. Parents, same parents, heterozygous, one cannot. What's the probability that these parents will have a child that is heterozygous or homozygous dominant? So T, T, or big T, big T. So if we remember our Punnett square, the potential offspring are either big T, little t, so you have a half of a chance there, or means you add, and you actually have zero of a chance to be homozygous dominant. So the answer is one half. So when you're looking at multiple events, at, look and see, is it happening both together and, or could you put the word or in the story problem? So let's do a couple. What I would suggest is you pause the video, look through this, answer the question. So if the male woman is albino, albino is a recessive trait, so she must be little a, so we're going to say little a. And the father to be is heterozygous, what's their chance of having an albino child? Okay, this is the same Punnett square we just looked at. We look at the potential offspring and we find that half could ha be albino. Okay, so that's a pretty simple one. <clears throat> Read this one, pause the video, and then come back. So based on the Punnett square below, what is the chance that this couple will have two albino children? So we see that albino for this chance cross, this is a monohybrid cross, is one-fourth. We want to know two children, so they each have a one-fourth chance. So the chance of actually getting two albino children, we multiply that and we get one-sixteenth. Next one, same cross, pause the video. So this is <coughs> that they'll have an albino child or a homozygous dominant. So if they have an albino, that's one quarter. The or tells you it's a plus. The chance of having homozygous dominant is also one out of four. So <clears throat> to add fractions, we just add the top, keep the bottom the same. Two fourths equals one half. All right, this, you might recognize these people um, from the Little People uh, TLC show. So achondroplasia, dwarfism, is an autosomal dominant disorder. Two alleles is fatal. So it's autosomal dominant. So we know that big A equals dwarfism. Two alleles for it is fatal. So big A, big A is fatal. The, the children don't are not usually born live. Um, it's just too much of a mutation in the development of the bones. So if two little people can produce normal size and dwarf children, what must be their genotype? So if we know dwarf is big A something, fatal is big A, big A, Little a, little a must be normal. So this is one of those instances that dominant is not more seen more often in the population, right? Here, recessive is. And if we know this information, we know that to be dwarf, you must be heterozygous. So the answer is B. So you take that, inf oh, so if you're not a little person, what is your genotype? We just did that one. So you guys are all homozygous recessive for the chondroplasia gene. All right, so if two people with chondroplasia, so we know that they're big A, little a, have children, what is the probability that they will have three normal sized kids, which in fact 
they did. They only had one child with a chondroplasia. So pause the video, figure this out. Okay, so from this, we saw, <clears throat> or, ah, what am I doing? We did the pun and square. Right, that's not gonna work very good. We have big A, big A, big A, little A, little A, little A, big A, little A. Okay, being normal size is little A, little A. So you have one fourth of a chance. To have three kids, you need to make one fourth times one fourth times one fourth, which is one sixty fourth. So this just goes to show you that <clears throat> probability, if, if they said, hey, we're hoping to have three normal sized kids and the genetic counselor said, wow, you only have one in 64 chance, you know what? It can happen. So probability is just that. A prediction doesn't mean it's going to happen, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Okay, I want to go through one more type of inheritance in this video, and then I will record a new one for sex link traits and for um, some other genetics terms. All right, so types of inheritance that relates genotype to phenotype. So we've been working with dominant recessive complete dominance, right? So where you have one copy of the dominant allele you get the dominant phenotype. But there are other types of dominance, and one is called incomplete. And in incomplete, the heterozygote is a blend of the two other gene or alleles. Okay, so the dominance is not complete. So if you have a red flower and a white flower, when you cross them, you're going to get pink flowers. So let me just write out this so you can see it better. So the way we represent these alleles, because they're one's not dominant over the other, we use both capital letters. So, to be red, you have to be homozygous for the red allele. To be white, you have to be homozygous for the white allele. And when you get a heterozygote, you see that red and white make pink. So the way you see both of these is you always look at the heterozygote. And again, we show these alleles differently because it's not dominant recessive, complete dominance. Co-dominance, co means both. <clears throat> so in this case, if you had this cow that is colored white and this cow that is colored red and bred them, you actually get this guy that is red and white. So you don't get a pink cow. <laughs> okay. You get both alleles showing up. So you get these spots of red and white on the cow. So keep in mind the difference. In complete, the heterozygous zygote is a blend. Co-dominance, the heterozygote has both phenotypes. So let's look at a couple questions. Based on the information given, what type of inheritance is shown? So the BW here has black and white feathers. It's not gray, so that is co-dominance. Based on the information, what type of inheritance is shown? So we have round, we have normal, and we have disc. 
So we don't have both. We have some kind of intermediate between these three phenotypes. So this is incomplete dominance. Now, here's your tricky one. Which are the heterozygotes? I really want you to pause the video and try to figure this out. All right, so let's just look at the letters before. So let's look back at the chicken, okay? You had black, you had white, and when you crossed them, you had black and white, okay? Oh, sorry, this is incomplete. So this would be gray. Ah. Oh. Okay, so we have black, we have white, and we have gray. And if we crossed to gray, and I don't really like to do it like this, I'd like to rather put color with superscript B and W, but it doesn't really matter. So if we looked at this, what do we see? We see we have one black, we have two gray, and we have one white. So what we're getting the most of is <clears throat> the intermediate. So if you apply that up here, if you were first thinking, oh, it must be round and normal, and round plus normal equals disc, that wouldn't work for this cross, right? Round and round would only give you round. So round is not homozygous. Round is actually Oops. Heterozygous. So that you have two to one to two. I'm sorry, two to one to one. Do you see that? So round is the heterozygous. Disc, I used bad letters, would be homozygous R, and normal would be homozygous N. So, which are the heterozygotes? The round head or the headache. Okay, I'm gonna skip to do a couple other word um, terms and then, like I said, we'll come back to sex linked. Okay, I want you to understand this term norm of reaction. Norm of reaction is stating that the environment can affect phenotype. And I think the most clear example is when you have genetically, wow, it's not what I meant to do. Uh, where's my, hold on. Okay, that was scary. Okay, when you have genetically identical plants, but they can grow to different heights due to the temperature. Right? So this is an example of how the environment can affect the expression of the phenotype. So these plants are all the same, right? They come from the same parents, the seeds are all genetically identical, but their final phenotype is different due to the environment. And that's an example of norm of reaction. Another important term oops, in genetics is polygenic and continuous variation. <laughs> so I want you to know that most genes in humans and dogs and cats is polygenic, which means many genes affect the trait. 
And for polygenic genes, or for polygenic traits, you get this continuous variation. So think of it like skin color. Okay, so this is an example of skin color. And if you were at class, you could look around the room and see a great diversity of skin color. So even if skin color was only influenced by three genes, <clears throat> you could have dark alleles and light alleles, and the combination gives you this huge range of phenotypes. So this big range of phenotypes is what's called continuous variation. So no longer do we have either white skin or brown skin, right? But we have everything in between. And then this shows you you can also have norm of reaction, right? So you have your skin color alleles, genes that affect your base skin color, but if you're out in the sun a lot or you go tanning, you're going to have a darker skin color. So it's not that we've changed your genetics, we've had your phenotype influenced by the environment. So this is a norm of reaction for skin color. Another really good um, example of polygenic continuous variation is height. Right? There's lots of genes that must influence your height because you're not just short or tall, but you can be everything in between and you can be different than your parents. So there's many genes that are affecting that trait. Okay, I'm going to pause there and then the next video I do will be sex link traits and pedigrees. Let me just make sure, yes. All right, I will see you in a bit.